When spermidine, hilarious name by the way, was supplemented to mice, it stopped the age-related decline in heart function and extended their lifespan by 10%. Pretty epic, right? And the great news is we can get it from our diet, so I won't be adding it to my supplement stack. So let's dive into the research and see why spermidine is such an important molecule in the anti-aging space. So spermidine is part of a group of molecules called polyamines and they're vital for our metabolism. Now our bodies can make spermidine, so they're not classified as a vitamin. And usually when I see molecules like this, I'm not particularly excited because if our body can produce the molecule, then why do we need to supplement it? However, with spermidine, their levels are profoundly influenced by external supply, either by oral ingestion by food or by the microbiome that can make the spermidine as well. And here's where it gets interesting for aging. So the levels of spermidine, they decline with age, so we can fix this either by boosting it in our diet or taking it as a supplement. And like we went through at the start of the video, giving spermidine as a supplement to mice, it stops the age-related decline in cardiovascular or heart function, and it increases overall lifespan by 10%. So how is spermidine doing this? Well, to explain it, I need to go through what autophagy is. So autophagy, it's a major mechanism of cellular adaptation to stress. And it literally means self-eating. So what happens during times of stress, for example, if there's not enough calories, the body, it digests itself. So what the cells do is that they take their old organelles, so for example, old mitochondria, and they digest them. And they use those raw materials for energy to rebuild other mitochondria or other organelles within the cell. And for this reason, autophagy, it's got a vast anti-aging potential. Because you can imagine, if you're getting rid of all of these old structures and replacing them with new ones, well, that's the holy grail of anti-aging. And autophagy, it's required for the anti-aging effect of spermidine. Because when the genes that control autophagy are knocked out, then we don't get the longevity extending effects of spermidine. Plus, there's even a signal in the data that spermidine, it may help prevent cancer. So it seems to enhance anti-cancer immunosurveillance in mice in an autophagy-dependent manner. And because of its critical roles with autophagy, it's sometimes referred to as a calorie restriction mimetic. But while that's all nice theory, the data that we've looked at, it's only in mice. What about in humans? What does spermidine do to us? So there are two prospective population-based studies that report for the first time that nutritional spermidine intake it's been linked to overall reductions in cardiovascular and cancer-related death rates in humans. And this is the important part. Often with these population-based trials, the data is from questionnaires. So there's lots of confounding factors. There's lots of other things that can influence the data. But even after correction for all of these possible factors, such as age, body mass index, consumption of alcohol, aspirin, diabetes. It still supports the idea that spermidine is involved in a reduction in overall death rates and disability. So with claims like that, it's vital that we dig a little deeper into the data. So let's have a look at one of these population-based trials. So this study, it enrolled people from 1990, and it was a random sample of all different ages, and overall, they studied 1,000 people. What they found is that the overall death rate significantly decreased across all age groups with increasing spermidine intake. And the association was dose dependent. So this is another key thing. If what we're seeing is true, as in if spermidine does decrease the overall rates of death, we should see that a little bit of spermidine, it only decreases the death rate a little bit, whereas more spermidine should be decreasing the death rate even more. And that's exactly what we see. And when other studies have looked at healthy older people, as well as people that reach 100 years old, they display levels of spermidine that are comparable to those who are 30 to 50 years old. Okay, so we've looked at overall death rates, cancer rates, and cardiovascular health. But what about memory? What can spermidine do to increase our cognitive function? Well, in mice trials, polyamine levels, so remember spermidine is a type of a polyamine, it's been shown to be associated with memory retrieval and formation. And in a previous safety trial that looked at spermidine in humans, they found a moderate enhancement of memory performance. And because of that signal in the data, right now there's a trial going on to see if spermidine can help with decreasing the rates of dementia. So it's called the SMART AGE study, and the primary goal is to determine whether spermidine supplementation has a positive impact on memory performance in those that are at risk 
of developing dementia and they're comparing it to a placebo. So looking at all of this data, I was getting very excited, but my supplement stack, it's already quite long and I didn't want to add to it. Luckily though, we can get a lot of spermidine in our diet. So let's take a look and see how we can do this. Well, it's the plant and fungi derived products that represent the most relevant sources for spermidine. So for example, vegetable sprouts, peas, mushrooms, broccoli, and cauliflower all have great quantities of spermidine. And spermidine, it does seem to be heat resistant, as in it's not destroyed by cooking. And by looking at these food sources, it does lead me to wonder, how do people on the carnivore diet get enough spermidine? Because animal derived foods, they generally contain less spermidine than the average plant or fungi derived foods. So just to drive this point home, Select mushrooms that have got up to 160 micrograms of spermidine per gram. Whereas classical meat, the most you'll see is 20 micrograms per gram. Now I haven't done in-depth research on the carnivore diet yet, but it's definitely a video that I'm looking forward to doing in the future. And just FYI, out of all of the polyamines, I'm focusing on spermidine because it's readily absorbable in the gut. So this means that we can get spermidine at good levels from our diet. Plus, it has to be emphasized that experiments have convincingly linked spermidine to increased survival, but not with some other polyamines. And this is probably because, again, spermidine, it's readily absorbable from the gut and it doesn't get easily metabolized. So we can absorb around 40 to 80% of it, whereas other polyamines are almost entirely metabolized. And there is one other thing. These trials that we've looked at, it's spermidine that's found in the diet it's not looking at mega dosing of spermidine, and it's certainly not looking at extreme diets. So we do have to keep that in mind when interpreting all of this. And this is why I personally don't want to be extreme dosing spermidine. Plus, from the data, it doesn't look like we should be mega dosing spermidine because we're already getting an effect from the quantities found in our diet. It's not like molecules such as resveratrol and NMN, where you can't feasibly get the dosages required in our diet. And this video wouldn't be complete without having a look at safety. So there is a three month randomized placebo controlled trial that gave 1.2 milligrams of spermidine per day and compared it to placebo. And overall, there were no differences in terms of the safety profile. So that is great news. Now, for those of you that do want to supplement spermidine instead of getting it from your diet, I did a quick Google search and I found spermidinelife.com where they sell one milligram of spermidine in each capsule. But again, this is not the route that I've chosen to take. And just to wrap this video up, there are a few other interesting points about spermidine that I do want to mention. So during a three month trial, the supplemented group of spermidine, they showed an increased growth of hair follicles compared to the placebo. So potentially spermidine may help with hair loss. And when spermidine is supplemented, it doesn't seem to significantly increase the whole blood spermidine concentration in humans or mice. Because what seems to be happening is that there's a fast absorption of spermidine into the solid tissues and organs. So even if you don't see a difference in blood levels, it's being absorbed into our organs where it can actually have an effect. And the final thing is that one of the mechanisms of how spermidine works is quite similar to aspirin. Now, unlike aspirin, Spermidine, it doesn't seem to thin the blood, and it is an important area of ongoing research. So I do want to leave you with an overall conclusion about spermidine. So in summary, there does seem to be an association between spermidine and increased survival in humans. And if confirmed in future intervention trials, it will have implications for health education at a population level for advocating high spermidine content as a novel feature of a healthy diet.